Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. So in this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto was half a spot a halt devil. This is part 1 and if you want more then please do leave a like share and subscribe. And don't forget to check tree link to support all authors. Let's get in the video. It was a normal sunny day in Kuo City Japan. It was around 5.30 in the morning and the birds were chirping their happy tune. They continued to sing their tune until an alarm came to life within a small apartment. It was a normal one-person apartment with a kitchen, bathroom and a small bedroom and a living room big enough to hold a full-length couch. The alarm was going off within the bedroom until a tanned hand reached up from from under the blankets on the bed next to the drawer the alarm sat atop of. The hand flopped on top of the drawer as it searched until it felt what it guessed to be the origin of the sound. The hand balled up into a fist and slammed on top of the alarm clock causing it to stop making its infernal racket. The hand slipped off the alarm clock that read 5.30. It fell to the side of the bed as the owner of said arm pushed himself up from his position on his bed as he sat on the edge of the bed. The owner of the arm was a tanned teenager around the age of 17. His spiky blonde hair that looked like it was weaved by pure gold sat upon his head as he ran a hand through it. He let out a loud yawn that echoed throughout his apartment conveying the loneliness that he lived with. He got up from his bed and walked over to the curtains before he opened them as the sun made the figure easier to see. Standing at an impressive 6 feet 2 inches tall. His messy blonde hair fell to the nape of his neck with two bangs framing his face and even with a few bangs being around his eyes. The front bangs fell down the front of his face and split at the bridge of his nose. Think Wulkiora's hair but with the top of it being Naruto's with Naruto's coloring. His eyes were strange. It was rare to find someone who had heterochromic eyes. His right eye was a bright sapphire blue whereas his left eye on the other hand was a lovely shade of emerald green. As though someone had taken a shard of both gems and round them to perfection and then placed them within the boy's eyes. His right eye though was peculiar, mainly in the shape of the pupil. Most pupils were rounded in perfect circles that either enlarged or shrunk. His right eye's pupil was that of a slit pupil, similar to that of a cat. Another strange thing was the green tattoo he had underneath said eye. It flowed down his face, stopping right at his chin, giving it a look as though he had a lone tear running down his face. His body was lean and compacted, giving it a look as though his body was chiseled out of marble by the Greek goddesses themselves. His legs looked muscular and yet, like the rest of his body, they weren't overly muscular and looked to be thin. The muscles compacted from his years of training, upon his chest, where his heart was located sat, what looked like yet another tattoo upon his body. This one was a gothic number four. Within his life the young teen was always avoided by people once they found out about the number that laid upon his chest. They believed he was a cursed child thanks to the fact that the number four shared the same character with death. True fact. This teen's name was Naruto Uzumaki. An orphan. Walking through his apartment, he grabbed a uniform that consisted of a black jacket with a dark green singlet that he would place under the jacket and a pair of black jeans with matching shoes. This was the uniform for Kuo Academy's students. He stopped and looked towards a photo that laid on his nightstand next to his bed. Within the photo stood a young Naruto around the age of five. His eyes were the exact same and a small glimpse of a black marking on the left side of his chest was visible thanks to his shirt being a bit too big for him. This proved that the number 4 was actually a birthmark on his body instead. Standing next to him was a young girl around the same age. Her arms were hanging over Naruto's shoulders. He golden eyes stared badly at the camera as no expression was shown on her face. Her blue hair with a dyed green fringe was pressed against Naruto's face as the girl had her head on his shoulder. Behind them stood a woman who had both of her hands on the two children's shoulders. She had chocolate brown eyes hidden behind some round glasses. A small smile was etched onto her face as she stared down at the two children. She was wearing a nun's outfit. Picking it up he looked on the side of the photo to see a message. The message was from the nun within the photo. My little ball of sunshine and my blue-haired darling. 
Mother will always love you no matter how far apart we may be. Love your mother, no no Yakushi. No matter how far huh. I wonder how you react now, seeing as I have become the very thing you raised us to believe were evil. Naruto said. His voice not having a hint of emotion to it betraying the small smile on his face. Having been raised in the orphanage since birth, Naruto always believed in what his mother told him, when he asked about his birth parents, Nono simply gave him a sad smile and held him close. She told him that the note he was left with, states that he was loved and that his parents would want to be there. When he asked what was left on the night he arrived at the orphanage, he was told that all that was left was himself, a note, and a small piece of paper with his name on it. Naruto placed the photo down before looking over at a sword that laid next to his bed. Grabbing the hilt, Naruto pulled the blade out completely and held it in front of him. He stood in the middle of his bedroom in front of his bed as energy started to slowly flow off of him. The color of the energy was a charcoal black with a green hue. He felt, what he assumed was tears, flowing out of his eyes. Bringing a hand up he found it to be a liquid the color of ink. The energy faded as the black liquid leaking from his eyes disappeared completely leaving his right eye without such markings and for his left eye to still have its normal green mark. He focused on a voice that he heard every time he held the blade within his grasp, but before he could learn the name, the voice faded away. Embrace your despair and call thy name. Those were the words he always heard when he held the blade. Though the name he awaited to hear never came, looking at the blade. He admired the fine edge of it and its quality craftsmanship. The blade was a normal length katana that had a silver guard in the unique shape of an eye. Its silver handle was wrapped in an aquamarine cloth. Placing the blade within its pale white sheath, he swiped his hand from left to right as a small cut appeared within the air. Getting dressed within his uniform Naruto grabbed the blade by the sheath and watched as the line split open leaving a black void within his apartment. The blade disappeared as in the same black energy he was releasing moments ago. Placing his hands within his pockets, he walked into the void as it closed behind him. His threw a look at the photo on his nightstand before the void closed swallowing him inside. Walking through the void, Naruto had time to think. If I'm right, the bastard will be coming any day now to try and make Rias his. I have to get stronger for her. He thought as he stopped and stood still within the void. Though, she seems to believe that her new pawn can do anything. If only I could hear the name, then maybe I would be given enough strength. While Naruto's thoughts were plodged by his promise, he remembered the day he met her, Rias Gremory. Flashback, Naruto was wandering around Kuo Academy. It was his third year at Kuo Academy and yet he never bothered to remember the layout he turned a corner and bumped into her. She was wearing the Kuo Academy female uniform. A pleated white shirt hidden under a black vest with a shoulder cape. The red pleated skirt seemed to be a bit short as Naruto got a brief glimpse at her panties before he turned away. She had red hair that fell down her back which Naruto found beautiful. Her eyes were a wonderful bluish green. Naruto helped her up and they walked to class together as it turns out they were in the same class. After a while they became the best of friends. But then tragedy struck as Naruto was killed by a demonic monster while walking home. He laid on the ground as a final wish came to his mind. I only wish to be able to tell Rias how much she means to me. After that he blacked out and awoke the very next day with Rias in his bed. She went on to explain as to how he was alive and to introduce him to the supernatural world. She explained that he was now a part of her peerage serving as her second night piece. He was happy that he would be able to spend more time with Rias. Eventually he was introduced to the rest of Rias's peerage. The queen was a Kano Himejima, a girl with violet eyes, long black hair that ended at her feet, tied together by an orange ribbon. She had a nice personality in which she cared for everyone else. But underneath the smile she always wore, was a sadistic woman who enjoyed making others feel pain. She was the queen of Rias's peerage. He met Rias's rook, a small girl with white hair and golden eyes that stared at everything with the same boredom he had. She had a small cat-shaped clip in her hair. This was Kaniko Tujo. 
a first year, and then he met her final piece, his fellow knight Kiba Yuto. Kiba was a boy with blonde hair and a mole on the left side of his face. He was a kind boy who helped Naruto at first. After a while, all of them managed to break through the wall he had built and actually got to know the real Naruto. A boy with a strong heart, who wanted to protect what's dear to him. Though, the walls were soon rebuilt in a much stronger fashion when he came along. It was not long after Naruto had managed to manifest his sacred gear which appeared in the form of a sword. With the manifestation, he gained a few abilities. He was able to fire a large, destructive, emerald green beam. A voice within his heath told him it was called, Sero. Next he was able to fire a quicker blast of energy from his hand. While not as strong as a Sero, the Bala, as the voice in his head told him the name, made up for it in pure speed. Speaking of speed, he also gained an ability called Sonido. It allowed him to disappear with the sound of a static pulse and reappear wherever he desired. This made his already enhanced speed from his night piece get pushed into overdrive. And then came a more passive ability that was always active. The Hiero. Basically the Hiero gives him the ability to stop most attacks without receiving damage. If the damage is too great though, his Hiero, minimizes the damage leaving only a piece of clothing to be scratched if not destroyed. He also had another passive ability, one that was quite useful in situations where he couldn't escape damage. High speed regeneration. He can heal any wound he had as long as it wasn't too severe. And then came his sensing ability, Pesquisa. He sends out a small energy pulse which his opponents can't detect and it reveals where they are. Similar to how whales used echolocation to find their way in the ocean. He's tried to access his the full power of his sacred gear but to no success as the power fades away before he could succeed in fully awakening it. Though he was always left with the same message. Embrace your despair and call thy name. Naruto realized that he's never felt enough despair within his life to truly experience despair. Though he can feel as though he's close now thank to Rias's new peerage member who took all eight pawns. Issei Hyodo. Naruto hated him, he took Rias's attention, the attention of the girl who he had feelings for. All Issei cared about were her boobs and looks. Thankfully Naruto still had the rest of the peerage as Kiba tolerated Issei but got annoyed with his perverted antics. Kaneko outright hated him and even abused him sometimes, usually hitting him with an object, which always earned her a pat on the head from Naruto. And Akano only saw him as a little brother and often teased him, but she tended to spend more time with Naruto more than anyone. Though Issei developed a small superiority complex as he thought that he was amazing for two reasons. One, because he took all eight pawn pieces, and two, because he had the boosted gear. The boosted gear was a sacred gear with the Welsh dragon Diedrig within it. With his sacred gear, Issei would be able to slay gods. Naruto laughed as Issei, even with his sacred gear still tended to make large mistakes he would have to clean up. The voice within Naruto's head, the one he thinks is his sacred gear, always said something that only Naruto could hear. Foolishness. No matter how many times you boost, zero times a number will always end up being zero. Then Rias's attention was grabbed again and besides Akano, she tended to ignore her other pieces as well. This time though she had brought in a blonde girl from the church. Her name was Asia Argento. She was excommunicated due to the fact her sacred gear, Twilight Healing, was able to heal anyone from all factions. After some fights where Naruto would be struggling and he would be slightly injured, she would try to heal to him only for Naruto to stop her and explain his high speed regeneration ability. Naruto didn't hate this girl, in fact like the others. She was one he liked a lot she. She was like the little sisters he had when he was still living in the orphanage. Usually, he stayed back and tried to protect her within a fight, but when someone else took over with protecting her Naruto quickly eliminated the threat. Out of the entire peerage, Naruto only had a problem with Issei. He basically despised the boy and couldn't stand him. He was indifferent to Rias now and the others were the only ones he cared about really. Though when Issei and Asia weren't around, 
Rias has explained her reasoning for focusing only on Issei. Asia was so she was welcomed and Issei was so that he could break her contract. She was in an arranged marriage with a man called Riser Phoenix. Naruto could tell that she absolutely despised the man as much as he did Issei. With this in mind Naruto made a choice to try and awaken his sacred gear's full power to save his cane. Flashback end, Naruto looked into the void of his way of travel. The Garganta. Another ability granted even though he never fully awakened his sacred gear. He creates a rift which allowed him to appear anywhere he wanted. Though time was a bit off, as when he exits it's usually an hour or two after he entered it. Continuing his walk through the Garganta, Naruto detected a power within it. Looking around, he saw a girl with black hair walking in the opposite direction of himself. Ignoring the girl he continued his walk as the Garganta opened up in front of him. The girl looked back at him with confusion on his face. A being that in touch with despair and yet he can't use his power to the fullest. Why hasn't he gone mad with power yet? What holds him to the realm of sanity? The girl though before she disappeared no traces of her being there. A cult research room. The atmosphere within the research room was tense as a blonde-haired man in a white suit stood in front of Rias with Issei on the floor. He had a sick smile on his face as he stared at Rias's body. Standing in between both of them was a beautiful woman with waist-length silver tresses. She was wearing clothing in the style of a Victorian maid. This was Graphia Lucifuge. Her ice-blue eyes stared at the two clan heirs with indifference though she had one thought plodging her mind. Where's Naruto-kun? He should have been here. Rias sama is gonna challenge riser sama to a rating game at this rate. And her worst fears came to light as Rias declared that she would fight Riser in a rating game. Riser agreed and said that if he was to win, then the wedding would be moved up by two weeks. Rias agreed and Grafia could do nothing but agree as she was only there to oversee the meeting. Sending Riser's peerage and Rias's own to the dimension where the fight would take place, she let out a heavy sigh as the fight started. Hearing a groaning coming from behind her, she turned around to see Naruto walking out with a confused look on his face. Seeing his small time tutor, Naruto asked her a question. Grafia Sensei. What are you doing here? Hello Naruto-kun how's my favorite student? Grafia asked as she tried to steer the conversation away from what she feels would break him. I'm good sensei. Studying has been going well after our last session. But now answer my question. Why? Are you? Here? He said as a frown appeared on his face. Sighing to herself, Grafia sat down and patted the open seat next to her. Naruto took the offered spot and watched as she pulled his head down onto her lap. Giving him a sad smile. Rafia decided that he should know. Naruto-kun, the reason I'm here, is because Riser sama decided that he would come and get Rias sama as he was getting impatient. He what? Naruto asked as he stated at the woman. I'm sorry Naruto but Rias went against him and challenged him to a rating game. It's going in as we speak. Her voice had a sad undertone as she stared at the boy who looked upset. So she believes that fool will be able to do anything. He said as his voice took on a tone that made Grafia shiver. Foolishness, I'll be leaving now. Naruto said as he stood up and disappeared with his sonido. Grafia sat there with her eyes closed as she felt bad for the boy. She opened her eyes when the two clan heirs returned with Rias having a depressed look on her face and Riser having the same sick grin on his face as before. Shaking her head she watched as Riser disappeared with the rest of his peerage while Rias sat down at her desk while the others looked at the ground. Rias sama, the wedding is within two weeks time. I suppose you prepare yourself, Grafia said as she disappeared. Meanwhile, Rias had one thought on her mind that she would put into place tonight. This is the only way, she thought staring at Issei. Meanwhile the others disappeared, going to see where Naruto may be to talk with him. Issei went home while Asia followed after Akano and the others while Rias sat at her desk as the sun set in the distance. Meanwhile with Naruto, he was currently in his room as he stared at the unsheathed blade as the voice within his head played over and over. What do you mean embrace my despair and call your name? I can never hear your name, he thought. 
then you are yet to embrace your despair fully, until you do, you'll never heal my name. The voice thought back to him. Betrayal is the key Naruto. The voice said before it disappeared completely. Naruto resheathed the blade as the others appeared in his room. Looking towards them, he gave them a sad smile as he stared at them. Akano walked over and sat by him. You lost didn't you? Naruto said, instead of asking. Yay. Naruto, I'm sorry, if only she tried to say. There is no reason to apologize, it's not your fault. Rias believed in Issei too much so that she was hoping that he would be able to stop Riser. Such foolishness. I will go and talk to her. Stay here. With those said, Naruto opened a garganta and walked through it. Once he walked into it, Akano went to stop him only for the garganta to close rather violently. She pulled her hand back and looked at the space in which it previously stood. She pulled her hand to her chest as a frown appeared on her face. With Naruto above Issei's house, the garganta opened up in the middle of the air above Kuo Academy. Naruto stepped out and saw that it was now night time. Staring at the moon, he found himself entranced by the glow of it. Activating his pesquisa he clicked his teeth as he found Rias right where he thought she would be. Inside her pawn's house. Using Sonido, he appeared down by Issei's bedroom window and was about to open it when he heard something that shattered him completely. Issei. Rias called desperately. Please take my virginity. She finished as Naruto opened the window and found Rias, pinning Issei to the ground with her top undone. Rias looked at Naruto with a shocked look as Issei was too busy leering at her breast. Rias tried to explain herself only for a pair of wings to burst from Naruto's back. Rias gasped as the wings weren't that of a normal devil's which formed from the waist, these ones formed at his back and were a lot larger. They were similar to that of bat wings. They formed from his back and grew out. They had black fur at the base of them and little hooks on the top of them. She went to move, only for Naruto to move away from the window and fly away with a powerful flap of his new wings. She would have followed if not for Grafia appearing with a cold glare on her face, directed at the perv staring at Rias. Grafia, scold me later, please you have to find Naruto. He found me about to give myself to Issei and he just left. Rias said as she knew how much the woman cared about Naruto. When Rias would walk in on their study lessons after she introduced him to her brother the day he was reincarnated, she saw that the woman really enjoyed Naruto's company. She saw a small look of horror appear on the woman's face before she freezed Issei completely. She gave Rias a stern glare before she disappeared trying to find Naruto. Meanwhile in the forests north of Kuo, Naruto was flying through the air as his energy flowed out of him forming a cone of sorts around his head. Seeing an open field, he landed as the energy continued to flow off of him. He felt tears staining his eyes as he tried to rub them away only to find the family or blacken on his hands. He watched as the nails on his fingers blackened out into a dark void as a line appeared stopping at the knuckle joint. He grabbed head as the power flowed out of him in a greater amount causing him to lose control as it flared out and destroyed the trees around. But Kano and the others were flying around the area as they chased after Naruto the moment he left. They saw smoke in the distance and small traces of black energy flow out everywhere. Looking at Kiba, who was holding Asia as she was still getting used to flying, and a worried Kaneko who wore a usually stoic face, she nodded to them as they all took him in the direction of the energy. Meanwhile Naruto was on his hands and knees as his power was becoming too much to control for him. Hearing someone step into the clearing, he looked up showing, two black lines flowing down his face as his one blue eye now had a slit pupil. He saw it was the girl who somehow made it into his garganta. She had black hair that flowed down her body as dull gray eyes stared at him with a small speck of curiosity. She was wearing a set of clothes in which Naruto noted, were that of a gothic Lolita fashion. She also had two X-shaped pieces of tape on her visible chest. Naruto called out to her begging her to stay away as she stared at him and walked closer. She ignored the energy waves that moved towards her only to miss completely. Eventually, she stood in front of him before she laid in the grass to become eye level with him. 
How has a being like yourself, one who has been wrapped within despair, while holding some rays of hope, only just now feel the overwhelming power of your sacred gear? She said as her monotone voice froze him in place. With the amount of power you're releasing now, you should be able to fully activate your sacred gear, he heard her say again. Fully activate it. He gave long pauses as his powers raged more. Yes, with the power your power raging as it is, you probably have reached a stage where you can finally use it. Dig into yourself and release its power. She ordered as Naruto heard the voice one more. Embrace your despair. Was first. While those words echoed throughout his head, he was remembering how Rias acted before she recruited Issei, when he realized that he loved her. Call thy name. Was next. With those ones bouncing in his head, he stood up as his hair grew in length to match Rias's own, only for it to darken to a shade darker than Aquino's. Murcielago was the last thing heard as his sword appeared in his hand as his energy stopped flowing as the young girl stared at him. His wings having disappeared, his hair having gone back to how it normally looked only in a pitch black color, and the green marking under his left eye was now mirrored on the right side of his face as his right eye turned green. His singlet, that he was still wearing, split in the middle as if cut by a blade, revealing the number 4 on his chest as the black and green energy leaked from it. A small line of what seemed to be black lipstick appeared on his top lip. Akano and her group along with Grafia, appeared in the clearing as Naruto turned and stared at them with dead eyes. No emotions were shown on his face as as he raised his blade towards them as the energy returned full force. Everyone even Grafia had to bring their arms up to cover their face with Kaneko holding Asia as the energy seemed to try and push them away. Though the girl next to him mainly stood still and looked at Naruto. Embrace my despair. He said pausing as the energy flowed violently off the blade. And call its name. He said again as a circle of energy formed at his feet. Tozes, Murcielago were the final words spoken as the energy at his feet exploded upwards, sending everyone bar the black-haired girl flying. The others all looked up to see that Naruto had undergone a complete change. His uniform had turned into a long white dress that ended at his feet. Instead of his feet being covered by a pair of sneakers, black shoes were in place that had a small tuff of black fur on the back. The black markings on his fingers reappeared as his nails grew slightly. His hair was now at his waist with the moon giving it a shine as though it absorbs all traces of light that touches it. On his head, now sat a helmet with a pointed tip that stopped at the base of his skull in the back. It had four spikes sticking out of the top with two of them resembling horns. His back now had two wings flowing out of his shoulder blades as they were spread out completely making them look like that of an eagle's in length while having more resemblance to that of a bat's. His green markings now became a dark black as though he has been crying black tears. What shocked them the most was that he had a hole in the center of his chest with the same black markings flowing down his chest while also spreading out. They watched as he looked over his body and gave his new wings a stretch. They looked as he raised a hand before a green spear appeared. Twirling it around, he dispersed it before turning towards the girl who was still standing next to him. You helped me awaken my power. Why? He asked as his voice matched the girl's own. Because you interested me. A being who was orphaned at birth, with his life being filled with despair. Naruto Uzumaki, child whose mother died giving life to him and also whose father died due to an unknown disease. Despair has been a large part of your life, and I can see you use your despair to become stronger. You claim you've found your full power and yet I feel as though you can push beyond your current power, she said as she opened a portal. And you can help me realize my true power? Naruto asked as she raised her hand which was radiating with energy. I will take you to a place in between worlds where you will be able to become stronger than you know. All you need to do is raise your hand, and grab mine. I will give you a mark which will allow you to exist within it. For if you had no form of magical protection, you would be ripped apart by the nothingness within. This mark is used from my own energy, I was born in the place and it is where I will help you become stronger, she said as Naruto raised his hand towards her own. 
Tell me your name, as I accept your deal so that I may become stronger. Naruto told her as his hand took her small ones within his own, an infantee symbol appearing on his right hand. I am a being who was born in the place I'm taking you. The dimensional gap. I am the infinite dragon also known as the Ouroboros Dragon Ophis. Come with me Naruto and you'll be able fully realize your power. She introduced herself as they both walked towards the portal. Though stopping short, Naruto looked at the others with a blank expression before he focused solely on Grafia. Tell Rias that after her wedding, I will no longer be part of her peerage. I will want my own peerage so that I am not tied down by her. With his words spoken, Naruto walked into the portal with Ophis following after him as the others stood still in shock by what he said. After a moment of silence everyone stood still as they tried to comprehend what happened. The silence was cut as Asia started sobbing. It's my fault isn't it? Cause I made Rias Sama focus completely on me. Naruto hated me just like he hates Issei. She said with tears falling from her eyes. Naruto didn't hate you Asia, in fact when me and him were alone, we talked about you. How you've grown and even though he never showed it, Naruto saw you as a little sister. He truly cared about you Asia. He never wanted you to get hurt. Mikano said as she walked over to the girl and pulled her into a hug. The fault doesn't belong to any of you. It belongs to Rias Sama. Grafia said as she turned around getting ready to leave. What do you mean Grafia Sama? Kiba asked her. Naruto has loved Rias since they first met. Call it a love at first sight thing but he did. He appeared at the window to Issei Hiodo's room and went to talk with her only to see her basically giving herself to Issei. Naruto felt his heart shatter and that's what caused this to happen. Guess we can only wait until the day of the wedding to see how he's changed. Grafia explained as she disappeared. The others all looked towards the space where the portal used to be before they all turned away and walked back to Naruto's apartment to see if they could find anything on him. With the group at Naruto's apartment. Everyone walked in as Naruto had told them where he left the spare key in case he ever locked himself out. When they heard of him having a spare key, they laughed as they could never see Naruto locking himself out. Entering his living room everyone sat down as Kaneko went to find anything considering her enhanced sense of smell. Walking into his room, she was unable to find anything until she noticed the photo on the nightstand next to his bed. Picking it up, she went back to the others to show them her discovery. Akeno looked at the photo and she had to admit that he was really cute as a child though she was surprised to see that he was actually raised within a church-run orphanage. Looking at the note on the side, she found herself wondering as to how long Naruto stayed at the orphanage and why he left. Looking out towards the moon, whose light shone into the apartment thanks to Kiba opening the curtains, she wondered how Naruto will be, once he returns. Naruto-kun. When you come back I promise you that I will make you forget about Rias. By changing your focus to myself. She thought with a slight like of her lips. Meanwhile with Naruto and Ophis within the dimensional gap. Remember Naruto can exist in it thanks to Ophis. After exiting the portal Naruto looked around as he saw that the dimensional gap was a place with a myriad of colors. It was a beautiful sight for him. This place, it's full of nothingness yet it looks so beautiful. He said as Ophis floated in front of him. Yes, the silence within here truly is a wonderful thing. Come Naruto your training begins now. She said as Naruto was dropped onto a slab of concrete as Naruto felt his power hand. You must be able to restore your power to how it originally was. Once you do, when the effects of the spell I placed on you fade, you'll be twice as strong, she said plainly. And how do I do that? He asked. Quite simple really. She spoke as a stray devil appeared. Kill the stray devil and your power will slowly return, she finished. Fine then, he said as he stood to his feet and formed his spear. I'll kill it and become stronger. With those words spoken, Naruto charged the devil ready to kill. Time skipped two weeks. Day of the wedding. It was the worst day of her life. Rias was currently sitting in a room wearing a traditional white dress for her special day. Hearing the door open she turned to see a young girl with blonde hair tied into two drills. She was wearing an orange dress with the symbol of the house of Phoenix of the back. 
This was Riser's little sister Ravel Phoenix. His bishop. She looked at the sad-looking Rias with a forced smile. Rias Sama, it's time, she said. Thank you Ravel. I'll be there soon. She said as Ravel exited the room. I'm sorry Naruto. Please forgive me, she thought as she walked out of the room. Standing at the altar wearing a black suit was Riser. His face showed how happy he was that he finally got the chance to make Rias his own. Looking over to the side and the back of the room, he saw Rias's peerage with Issei looking annoyed. Hearing the doors open he watched as Rias walked in with a depressed look on her face. When she stood next to him, he smiled at her causing her to look away. Though before they could start the ceremony, Ophis appeared in between the both of them and pushed Riser to the center of the room. Look on towards the girl. He gave an annoyed growl before he shouted at her. Who are you and why are you interrupting this wedding? Just because, she said plainly. Why you little? He grounded out as he raised his right hand as fire gathered around it. I wouldn't do that if I was you. A voice from behind him spoke as something wrapped around his neck. Everyone looked and saw that the thing holding him was a black tail. Following it back to the person, they found a being whose arms and legs were covered in black fur while his feet had four claws on the front of his foot with a fifth at his heel. His hands had long black nails about an inch in length and sharp enough to cut through bones. Rias and her peerage saw the familiar bat-like wings on the person's back. The long black hair also struck a familiar cord within them. On his head, were two long ears that was similar to a bat's possibly giving him enhanced hearing. His eyes were a bright yellow with a slit pupil. The being's cold look was only enhanced by the dark green background. Though the thing that revealed his identity was the hole in his chest that leaked black ink down his chest and the two black lines flowing down his eyes. If you try to hurt Ophis Chan, I will have to hurt you badly, the owner of the voice said before his tail moved and threw Riser into the wall. They watched as Ophis walked over to the being and stood next to him as everyone who say her before noticed she changed. She now stood at a wonderful 5 foot 8. She was still wearing a gothic lolita dress but now she had a black tank top on covering her chest which were now matching Aquino's in size. Her body was slim which lead a round ass which had a few men staring. Out of her hair was the tips of her ears showing them to be pointy. Thank you for that, but I think you should hurry up and do what you came here to do. She said as the being next to her was enveloped in a dark green energy that caused Aquino and the other's eyes to widen in shock. Once the energy faded, Naruto stood in front of everyone wearing a long-sleeved white trench coat with two tail ends sticking out on the left and right sides. Wearing a pair of white pants and a pair of black dress shoes. He looked at Riser with an uninterested gaze, causing Riser to become pissed. What are you doing here low class? Riser asked. Fulfilling a promise I made, was all Naruto said. I see, you want to have Rias for yourself don't you? We all know how much you love her. You're doing this faux riser tried to say before Naruto cut him off. Foolishness. I could care less about Rias Gremory. I'm only doing this as I made a promise to myself. A promise that I will keep. Once this I over I will no longer be under her servitude. This is my last job as her knight. He announced to everyone as his sword appeared in his hand as he pointed it towards riser. The same look that made Riser feel as though he was an insect within Naruto's eyes. Riser Phoenix, I challenge you to a raiding game to release Rias Gremory from the contract between you two. He declared getting a round of gasps from everyone. Meanwhile standing next to Grafia was the older brother of Rias Gremory, Sirzax Lucifer, one of the four Mao. He had originally wanted Issei to oppose the marriage and challenge Riser but this worked as well. He turned to look at Issei only to see him joining in on wanting to fight for Rias. Though instead of wanting to free her from the contract, he wanted to take Riser's place. Looking at the queen of his peerage, he saw her staring at Naruto with a smile. Do you think he can win? He asked referring to Naruto. He is my student Sirzax. And I can tell that Naruto has truly become stronger. Maybe in the future strong enough to fight against you she said with a smile of pride. Okay then. 
he said before walking over to the three men. Not noticing the woman pull out a queen piece before gesturing Naruto to come towards her. Hey there everyone. Naruto, Issei, do you truly want to help? He asked them as he stared at the two. Naruto lowered his sword and gave a slight nod before he saw Grafia's gesture, while Issei had a more vocal approach. Of course, Bukau's virginity belongs to me alone. With that said, a long awkward silence sat throughout the room as everyone stared at Issei. Fool, was all Naruto said before giving Sirzex a place where they could battle. By sending a flash of energy to the red-haired man which contained an image of an area in which they could fight. After that he used Sonido to appear next to Grafia who teleported them away. Looking at Riser, he saw the boy staring at the remaining boy with pure hatred in his eyes. Well Riser what do you say to this? A battle between yourself, the wielder of the boosted gear and an unknown variable? He asked with a smile. I will accept their challenges Lucifer-sama. But once I win, I will have them both executed. Riser spoke his arrogance lacing every one of his words. As Naruto reappeared within a blue seal as Grafia pocketed something and stood next to him with a smile on her face. He seems stronger. Akano stated as Rias moved towards them with Grafia following. Rias sama The group bowed as their king stood next to them. Do you think either of them will win? She asked as she noticed she couldn't feel her night peace within Naruto at all. Personally, I believe that Naruto-kun will try and eliminate Issei-san first before he moves on to Riser-sama. Grafia said as she reached the group. Also Rias-sama. I want you to sign this. She said pulling out a note and giving it to Rias. Nothing too big to worry about Rias-sama. Grafia said hoping the girl would just sign it. Thankfully after Grafia handed her a pen, Rias signed her signature on the sheet without looking at the sheet of paper. If she had she would have seen that it was actually a legal binding document titled Documentation of Trade Between Grafia Lucifuge and Rias Gremory for Rias's Knight Naruto Uzumaki. Taking the paper and pocketing it, Grafia smiled as the document allowed Grafia to take Naruto into her peerage as a queen while Rias gets back the night piece she used to bring Naruto back. Okay then. Alright everyone. A raiding game is about to occur between these three young devils. The heir of the Phoenix Clan Riser. The one who wields the boosted gear Issei Hiodo. And Naruto Uzumaki, a child whose powers remain unknown to us. If Naruto wins, Rias Gremory will be released from her contract. If Issei wins, he will take Riser's place. And if Riser wins, both of the aforementioned boys will be killed. Sirzex declared before the three boys disappeared in a red flash. Let the raiding game for Rias Gremory's fate begin. He said happily believing in the two boys. With the fighters, for the battle stage, think Los Noches Canopy. Riser and Issei were teleported onto what they thought was a rooftop. Looking around they found four pillars standing in the center of the rooftop. Looking out into the distance all they found was a desert with white sand and a black sky. So have you finally gotten used to the area? I would hope so, Naruto said as he stared down onto the two boys with the moon behind him. What are you doing up there? Too scared to come down and fight me, Riser taunted as Naruto pointed his blade down towards the other participants. Scared of you? Utter foolishness. I have not come across a being in which I fear. You are not something that can bring fear into me no matter how hard you try. Naruto said as they all felt a strong force pushing down on them. This is my sacred gear. Its full name is Despair's Onslaught Murcielago. And the way I access it completely is as simple as this. He said as his energy flowed out as the others were rooted to their spot. Tozes, Murcielago. With those words, Naruto entered his release state his white coat appearing with his helmet placing itself on his head. The other two stood in shock of the raw power which flowed off the boy. They watched as a green spear appeared in his right hand as Riser brought out his flames while Issei summoned his own sacred gear. Calm yourselves. Hold your stance. Don't let your guard down even for a moment, he said calmly before he appeared in front of Riser with his spear ready to remove his head. 
Riser's eyes widened as Naruto moved his arm trying to finish the match already. Using his flames as defense. A large green explosion occurred as Naruto appeared next to Issei and using his wings, slapped him away without hesitation. Remember Issei, we are not on the same side. If given the chance I will eliminate you completely. He said as he looked towards Riser. And you. I'm impressed. Using your fire at the last second to divert my attack. If you hadn't done that, your head would be rolling at my feet. He finished as Riser looked at him a trail of blood flowing from his chest. I'm going to enjoy killing you both. He spoke as Issei walked back to them within his armor. Sighing to himself, Naruto decided to ask them a question as it was already starting to annoy him. Tell me something. Riser, Issei. Why do you fight against an opponent who you have no chance of defeating? Because there is no way that I, a pure breed devil can ever lose against a reincarnated piece of shit like you. Riser said as his flames increased. And I have to, for Buckhau's sake. I will win her over in this fight and then, she will give me herself as a present for winning this fight. Issei declared. Both of you. What you've both said is nothing but utter foolishness spread by those who have never known the true despair of defeat of loss. Naruto spoke as his eyes closed as a frown appeared. Opening his eyes, they saw his eyes were now exactly like they were when he arrived. They watched as his coat started to peel away as his energy flowed forth. I will teach you the true meaning of despair. I will crush all hopes of winning you have and grind them to dust beneath my feet. Behold Riser and Issei this is what true despair looks like. He said as his energy fully enveloped him before slowly fading away. Despair's onslaught Murcielago. Balance breaker. Segunda Atapa. He said as he stared at the two boys. Before they could even think of retorting, they felt a dark force holding them tightly as cold shivers were sent throughout their body. As if the despair radiating off their opponent had frozen their nerves completely. Issei, getting his nerves back charged Naruto and launched an energy attack in which Naruto blocked with a spear. When he tried to circle around to get another shot, he was met with Naruto firing a Sero off without moving his head from looking at Riser. Taking his attention of the Phoenix Clan air for a second, Naruto looked towards Issei who had a bit of his armor chipped away. He went to turn back to Riser only to have said asshole launch a fireball at him from behind. A large explosion occurred forcing Issei to fly into the air while Riser laughed. How's that? The tables have turned and now I'll be the victor. He laughed until he heard a voice from behind him. Unfortunately for you, I can't allow that to happen. Turning around he saw Naruto who was missing his left arm. Having sacrificed it to block the attack. Raising his remaining hand as the other reformed, he focused his power into the tips of his fingers as a black ball formed. That was a nice attack, now let me show you mine, he said as the ball grew in size till it resembled a golf ball. Sero Escuras, was what Riser heard before he was enveloped in the black Sero. Turning toward a Issei he watched as the boy brought his hand forward and gathered energy into it. Bringing his hand forward while he formed another Sero Escuras as he noticed Riser falling to the ground, he kept Issei in his sights. I will end you here and now. Naruto declared, the fight boring him already. I will win, I won't let you have Bucko. Issei declared as he boosted himself again. How many times must I say it? I don't care about Rias, have her after this if you want I won't stop you. I'm simply making you realize how far beneath me you are. Naruto said before they both launched their attacks with Naruto's easily pushing Issei's back until a large explosion occurred. Knocking Issei out cold. No matter how many times you boost yourself, you will never be able to fight against me. Naruto told him before he turned back to Riser who stood up. I will ask again, why do you stand against an opponent where you have no chance for victory? Naruto asked confused as Riser flew into the air above him and as Issei was removed to have his injuries fixed. Because I am Riser Phoenix, a high-class devil, I will regenerate all wounds you give me, I will be stronger than you. I am destined to be stronger than you, a filthy no-named low-class reincarnated devil. Riser shouted as he launched his strongest attack at Naruto. Bringing his wing in front of him, 
Naruto let the fireball impact completely engulf him as he protected his main body parts with his wings. Riser started laughing as he believed that Naruto simply stood still as he gave up, only for his laughter to die as Naruto's wings swung out returning to its normal position as the fireball was erased completely by the power behind the swain. Bringing his palms together as a green light appeared within the small gap, pulling them apart so both hanged at his sides. A light green javelin with a smoky tail appeared. Grabbing it at the middle, Naruto spun it around before he looked towards Riser. Lanza. Del. Relampago. Naruto said as he prepared to throw it. What's that gonna do? Riser asked slightly fearful of the javelin with a flame-like tail and arrowhead. Just watch. Don't move for I would rather this not go off at close range. Naruto said as he threw the javelin-like weapon at Riser. The javelin moved past Riser just missing his shawr before it continued into the distance. Riser watched as it traveled into the distance until it had contact with a sand dune quite some distance away. His eyes grew to enormous proportions as once it made contact, it triggered a large explosion. The blast just exploded upwards leaving it to form in a cylindrical shape as it grew to be seven times higher than the building they were standing on. He felt the shockwave that came flying back towards the last two fighters. It blew the sand up from the ground causing it to slam into the building and fly up so that it nearly touched the two of them as it fell back to the ground. He watched as it all calmed down before he turned to see Naruto calmly staring at him as another attack formed within his hand. I missed. Oh well, it always was hard to control, Naruto said as he prepared to throw another one. Riser however created a fireball and launched it at Naruto, whose yellow eyes narrowed at the sight. Using his sonido to get behind Riser, Naruto charged his black sero as his tail wrapped around Riser's neck, quickly placing his hand at Riser's right eye as the sero completely formed. You're both lucky and unlucky to be a phoenix right now. Lucky because you'll no doubt survive. But unlucky cause this is going to hurt. Was all Naruto said before the vision in Riser's right was enveloped in darkness. Everyone within the wedding rom watched and were shocked at how Naruto helped no hesitation to do such a thing. They watched as his tail moved and threw Riser away as said boy held the now empty, bleeding eye socket. Standing across from Naruto as his eye continued to bleed. Give up Riser. You have no hope of winning against me, Naruto said as he stared calmly at the boy. No I won't, he stubbornly declined as he pulled his hand away. At the rate you're going, I'm going to be left with no choice but to try and kill you, Naruto said as he aimed to throw another javelin. You'll die trying low class scum, Riser screamed as he threw a fireball the size of a tank at Naruto who simply threw his own attack. Everyone watched as the attack pierced the fire and dispersed it completely before it continued on its way towards Riser before it connected with his body. The blast exploded with Riser inside it. After it faded away, Naruto watched as what was left of Riser fell to the ground. Following after him, Naruto appeared on the ground next to Riser. Looking at the boy he decided to ask him a question. Riser Phoenix, Do you surrender this match? and do take into account your current situation and how fast I can make the attack that put you into this state. He added at the end wondering if the boy would give up. I surrender. He breathed out as he only had one arm, half of his body missing and both of his legs missing. Good, was all Naruto said as he and Riser were returned to where everyone was gathered. Breathing out as his eyes returned to their normal color until his balance breaker vanished leaving him in his normal sacred gear form. His entire sacred gear faded away leaving him in his white clothes as his sword disappeared. Naruto turned towards Akeno and the others and gave them a nod before looking to see Grafia walking towards him. Their eyes met and an unspoken question was relayed between them. As Grafia handed something to him. She was about to send him to Ajuka only for Rias to stop them. Thank you Naruto. I can't ever re she tried to say only to be cut off. Foolish girl I don't care what you say. Just know this. He said don't make the same mistake you did with me with your next night. And unless I'm ordered to, by my new king, I will not help you. 
I truly refuse to be under your command any longer. This is goodbye my foolish former king, he said before throwing the piece at her. Your new king, she exclaimed confused. Yes allow me to properly introduce myself now. My name is Naruto Uzumaki. The queen of the peerage of Lady Grafia Lucifuge. The number on my chest has nothing in regards to placing. I am her espada. Naruto declared as he stood next his new king. What? Grafia is your new king? But I didn't sign anything giving my permission for the trade? Rias declared as she tried to think if she did such a trade. Actually Rias Sama. You did. The paper I got you to sign earlier was in fact a paper regarding you trading Naruto to me in return of your peace. If I didn't trick you like that, then Naruto would have probably gone rouge. Grafia explained as she stood next to her queen. With those words spoken, Naruto went to leave only for Lady Phoenix to stop him. I'm sorry for any disgrace I have shown your clan. Naruto apologized only to hear a soft laugh coming from her. Naruto. I don't care about that. You put up an impressive fight and not to mention, though unknown, you truly held yourself as strong as possible to show yourself to be worthy of being the queen of the strongest queen. She said as Naruto smiled oitly at the praise. I assume you and Grafia are on your way to receive your evil pieces and for Ajuka to perform the high class ceremony. She added on wanting to know if he would work for her plan. You would be correct in that assumption Lady Phoenix. Naruto said respectfully. Naruto I want you to do a favor for me. While you are no longer directly connected to the Gremories, this can in fact build good relations between our clan. She said with a smile as Naruto looked at her. What would the favor be, Lady Phoenix? Naruto asked as Lady Phoenix called Ravel over to her. What I would want from you Naruto, is to take Ravel as your bishop. I will give Riser one of my empty bishop pieces while Ravel would become yours, she said as Ravel looked at Naruto. Naruto gestured for her to move closer to him, when she did as such, her eyes widened as Naruto's right moved towards her. She watched as it got closer to her before she closed her eyes only to feel a small weight on her head. Opening her eyes, she saw him staring at her with a light smile on his face as Naruto petted her head. Ravel Fenix. If you decide that you want to become one of my members after I get my pieces, then I will protect you from those who would try to hurt you. If not then so be it. He said as he brought his hand away from her. I will make you strong all I ask is that you stay by my side. With that said he backed away as he wanted her to decide. HMPH, you're gonna need someone to help manage your peerage so that you won't bother your king constantly with things. I'll do it, she said as she smiled. Thank you Ravel san Naruto said as his king came over to the both of them. Naruto it's time to go, she said as Naruto nodded while he looked at Ravel who nodded. Naruto, Grafia, and Ravel left as they had to meet with Ajuka to get Naruto his own set while everyone else tried to comprehend the events that have occurred today. Ajuka's lab, so tell me young devil. The reason as to why you should be given a peerage. A young man who looked to be in his early twenties asked as he ran a hand through his green hair while the other was within the pocket of his white jeans. I want a peerage, so that should I find people who I can come to trust, I will want them to join me so that I will be able to keep them away from coming close to the despair I have felt. Ajuka sama Naruto said as he remembered the blue-haired girl from when he was younger. Unknown to him, he was getting a smile from both of the girls with him. That is a wonderful answer. I will now start the ceremony to make you a high class devil, the now named Ajuka said. Sitting down in front of him, Naruto closed his eyes as the ceremony began. Once it was over, Naruto opened his eyes to find Ajuka holding a king piece in front of him. Taking the piece and placing it inside himself, he saw a green flash as Ajuka showed him the rest of his set. Two pieces have mutated a rook and a bishop. Naruto good luck with your life from now on. I can't wait to see where you go. Ajuka said as Naruto stood up before grabbing the non-mutation bishop and did the ceremony to welcome Ravel into his peerage. And Naruto. Ajuka said getting his attention once he was done. I want you to do me a favor. He said as Naruto looked him in his purple eyes while Ravik stood next to him. 
What is it in Juka Sama? Naruto asked. There's a place that I want you to investigate for me. Consider it a vacation, really. Ajuka said with a small smile looking at the boy. Where is this place Ajuka Sama? Naruto asked. It's a small set of islands just east of Japan. You'll have to take a boat which I'll have ready for you by tomorrow, Ajuka said smiling. And this place is called? Naruto asked getting a bit impatient. The Isles of Bessiria. It's a place that humans can't enter due to the energy hiding the place while devils are easily able to find it as they can get through the energy properly, Ajuka explained. I will pack my stuff when I return home. Thank you for this chance Ajuka-sama. Naruto said bowing before he, Rafia and Ravel left. Appearing at Lucifer's castle, Naruto and Ravel wished Grafia a good night as he opened a garganta, getting ready to leave only for her to stop him. While you have problems with Ria-sama, do know you can come here if you ever need to talk. After all Milika's sama does enjoy having you here. And I enjoy having you here as well. Rafia said as she planted a small kiss on Naruto's cheek. What was that for? He exclaimed shocked. I thought you were married to Sirzak sama he shouted as the woman laughed. No Naruto. Me and Sirzak sama dated, but we never truly got together. We split up after the war was over. He has his wife who is Milika's Sama's true mother. Rafia explained as a blush came over Naruto's face. Oh you're blushing Naruto-kun. Have you been having naughty thoughts? She teased as Naruto walked into his garganta quickly with Ravel following him. She laughed to herself before she walked inside Lucifer's castle. Human world. Meanwhile, Naruto and Ravel had just appeared in his room. He told Ravel that he could sleep on the couch if she stayed. She refused and told him that she'd be over in the morning to wake him up. After she left, and once his blush died down and he looked at himself in a mirror. I thought I couldn't feel emotions anymore after I reached my balance breaker. Wasn't that a price I had to pay? He asked himself as Ophis appeared behind him. Your price was not being rid of emotions but instead having them dulled. Your emotions are a part of you and you can't be rid of them. She explained as she grabbed his hand and dragged him to his bed. Throwing him on it and laying next to him, she closed her eyes as the night silence lulled her to sleep. Looking down at the former Loli who is still leagues above him is strength. Naruto let out a quiet sigh as she cuddled into him. Smiling, he remembered that this is how they usually fell asleep together within the dimensional gap. Deciding to worry about his trip in the morning, he closed his eyes as he was lulled to sleep by her breathing. End theme Black Knight Town Naruto awoke to the sound of his alarm clock going off and for someone to be banging on his door. Moving the infinite lowly off his chest, he walked over to the door with a pair of black jeans on before opening it to find Rias's peerage bar Rias and Issei, along with his bishop, Ravel, standing at the door, Looking at them with a raised brow, he moved away from the door as he walked back into his apartment. What are you all doing here? He asked with a yawn as he grabbed a shirt and placed it on with a black zip-up jacket on top of it. Well, we came to see how you were doing. Akano said as she saw Naruto grab a full duffel bag. What's that for? She asked confused as Ophis walked down. He has a trip. So he's just packing the rest of his stuff away. She said before walking over to Naruto before she pulled his shirt away from his neck. Once she did that, she leaned closer to him before everyone watched as she bit into his neck roughly. They watched as blood flowed down his neck lightly as she moaned slightly. She pulled her head away and everyone watched as a tattoo appeared around his neck similar to that of a collar. It was two snakes intertwining as they shifted around his neck until they eventually stopped at the front of his throat before they circled around the hole at the base of his neck and bit into the neck of the other snake. What is this exactly? He asked as he stared at it in confusion before grabbing a tan raincoat and placing it on before giving an umbrella to Ravel. A mark that symbolizes that you belong to me, Ophis said as Naruto looked at her while everyone else was shocked. Wait. So you basically made it so that Naruto is your mate? Ravel asked shocked. Correct. He is mine. I will share him but I will be his first and nothing will stop me. She said as she glared towards Akano who returned at full force. All of you can come see me off, but you're not coming along. 
This is a mission for Ravel and I are you ready? He said to them before turning his attention to his bishop. Yes I am Naruto-kun. Shall we go? She asked before he opened a garganta. Let's. Was all he said as Ravel jumped into the garganta with Naruto and the others following. Once they exited it, they found them on the docks on the edge of Kuo. They all saw what looked like a huge boat that was meant for an entire party group instead of two people. They also saw Ajuka standing next to it as he lit a cigar while Grafia stood next to him. Everyone watched as Naruto walked over to them and bowed. Walking over and doing the same they saw Ajuka pull out a little black notebook with a pen and give it to Naruto. What I want you to do Naruto is research. There is a special breed of demons called Therions. Apparently there is only one left on the islands. The way to find her is to look out for a demonic left arm that she has. He explained as Naruto took the notebook and looked at him confused. Her? He asked. Yes, her. Don't worry about it. You'll be fine especially with your abilities. Now once you reach the Isles of Berseria, A, N. Sorry I spelled it wrong last chapter. But thanks to someone I got the proper way to spell it. You will meet a girl waiting for you at the docks. Her name is Crow. That's all she gave us. You need to find out the rest yourself. Good luck Naruto, Ajuka said before he disappeared. Looking towards his cane, Naruto saw her hand him a bag with what he thought to be clothing. Looking inside, he found his assumption to be correct as a black suit was inside it. You represent me as my queen. While I do not care where I stand in the underworld I will not have my name tarnished. Understand? Rafia asked with a glare getting a smile from Naruto. I understand my cane. He said bowing to her. Good, see you when you get back. Was all he heard as she vanished. Straighting up, he nodded to everyone as he and Ravel boarded the ship. Everyone watched as Naruto turned to them and offered a small wave before the boat started up and left. Naruto saw as Ophis walked into a portal she made as he felt the marking around his neck flare up. Sighing to himself, he watched as everyone left before he turned and walked towards a bathroom that was on the boat as Ravel sat on a bench watching as the water flowed past her. She watched as Dolphin swam next to the boat and jumped into the air. Hearing footsteps behind her, she turned to see Naruto walk over to her dressed in his new clothes from Grafia. He was wearing a black button-up suit with orange studs on the wrists. With matching black dress pants as well as chocolate brown dress shoes. He had a black white undershirt under the suit jacket that had the collar neatly folded over with a black tie. This hid his hole in the marking from Ophis completely, and gave him a more sophisticated look. On his hands were a pair of white gloves that covered his entire hand and went to his wrists. Basically he's dressed like Sebastian from Kuroshitsuji, Ravel felt a blush occur on her face due to how Naruto looked. He sat down next to her and simply crossed his arms and closed his eyes. You better rest. Who knows how long till we reach the Isles, they heard the captain said. With those words in mind, Ravel came closer to Naruto before she closed her eyes and leaned onto his shoulder. Naruto looked at her before he wrapped an arm around her shoulders. This brought her closer to him as he closed his eyes, deciding to take the captain's words to heart. One hour later, Naruto had his head back and was jerked awake as they hit a particularly rough wave. Opening his eyes, he found Ravel had moved from his shoulder and was now resting her head on his lap while he was running a hand through her hair. Shaking her awake, Naruto watched as she sat up and stretched out causing some cracks to sound. She turned towards him with a smile as she picked up a small handbag as they noticed they had finally come to a stop. Naruto looked over the side and saw a woman sitting down on a chair. Grabbing his duffel bag and opening a garganta, he placed it inside before closing it completely. He walked down to the bottom of the ship with Ravel following him. Once they got of the boat, they looked towards the woman as she stood up and looked up at them with bored golden eyes. Her bored look was returned by Naruto's own as Ravel stared between them with her head tilted. It's like looking at a female version of him, she thought. And she was right. The woman in question with how she gave an impassive and bored gaze looked like a female version of Naruto just with golden eyes and natural black hair. 
Her midnight black hair fell to her knees and the end was tied together by a gray hair tie. She was wearing a torn red vest that covered her chest and left her stomach open to the world. She had on what was possible remains on black jeans. They were torn leaving her legs open, though her more important parts were now hidden by her now shorts. She had multiple belts on her body. One was wrapped around her waist while she had another three around her right thigh. She had armor plating on her right leg going from her foot to her knee while it only covered her foot on the other leg. She also had matching armor on her right arm that went from her forearm to her elbow. However something that caught both of their attention more than anything was the fact her entire left arm was covered in bandages. However they never thought of it and left it alone. She also had a ruined black cape that was tied around her collarbone. While looking at her Naruto had to admit she was quite beautiful. She also saw the woman's golden eyes boring in Naruto's own with no emotion that she could see. She watched as Naruto raised his hand towards the woman. Naruto Uzumaki was all that he said. Velvet, Velvet Crow, was what he got in return. It's nice to meet you Miss Crow. This is Ravel Fenix, he said bringing her attention to Ravel who bowed. It's nice to meet both of you. Come, I will show you to where you will be staying, she said walking off with the two following her. While following Velvet they were given a small tour of her home. She showed them where all the main shops to buy groceries were. Though out the tour, Naruto and Ravel kept quiet and simply took in the scenery. That was until a little girl came running up to them and bumped into Naruto. She hit the ground while Naruto stayed as still as a statue. Him and Ravel looked down to see a little girl wearing gray rags, that were two sizes too big for her, as clothes. Her black hair looked dirty while her eyes held a look that Naruto knew all too well. A look of someone who has given up. Someone who had the same eyes he did as a child. The eyes of someone who has given into despair. Looking up, he saw a small group of four grown men coming towards them with sticks in their hands. Velvet glared at the people until she saw Naruto move in front of her and hold the girl to the back of his leg. Who are all of you people? Why was this girl running from you? He asked, a slight undertone of anger within his voice. None of your business outsider. One roared as the little girl grabbed his pant leg tightly. Naruto looked down at the girl and saw that she had small scratches on her arms. Seeing those injuries on a small girl who was only about six years old, brought the anger Naruto held within him to the surface as he glared at the men. It's my business now. This girl is under my protection now and to see injuries like that to someone her age is a quick way to piss me off. And let me tell you this. Me getting angry is not something that happens often. Naruto spoke to them as he turned to the little girl. Were these the ones that did all this to you? He asked, hiding his anger as to not scare her. The girl didn't trust her voice nor did she trust Naruto so all she did was give a slight nod. Ravel watched as Naruto's eyes which showed that he felt sorry for the girl, became covered in anger completely. She moved over and brought the girl away while holding onto her to make sure she didn't run away. Don't worry, I haven't known Naruto-san for long, but I know one thing. He's gonna teach those bullies a lesson for picking on you. She said calmly as Velvet overheard it and looked towards Naruto. She's just an orphan girl that you have never met and yet you want to protect her after just meeting her. Naruto Uzumaki huh? Interesting. She thought to herself as Naruto walked up to the man leading the group. His hair overshadowed his eyes, before he looked up showing his true anger. They watched as he kicked the leg out from under the leader while grabbing his arm before attacking his ribs as the grip on the leader's weapon lessened to the point where Naruto tore it from his grip and then spun around before slamming the front of the stick into his face. Turning to the other men he dropped the stick before disappearing. They were looking for him only for Naruto to deliver a strong kick to one of their heads. The last two turned only for Naruto to grab both of them by the head and slam their heads together. Looking around, Naruto saw the small group of four men lying down groaning as they held various parts of their own body. Placing his hands in his pockets, he went to move back to Ravel's side only to turn and kick one of the men who were starting to stand back up in the side of the face sending him back down hard. 
He watched as the others went to stand but instead stayed on the ground as they felt a dark presence come over them. They all turned their attention to Velvet who was covered in a dark aura as heat waves flowed off her left arm. Naruto's eyes narrowed, before he saw her looking towards the men lying on the ground as she stalked over to them. Naruto walked past her as she stopped in front of them and stepped on the head of the closer man as she stared at all of them with a glare. He looked at the young girl and saw her staring at Velvet with a smile. Meanwhile the group of men were cowering in fear as a blade shot out from then gauntlet armor on her right arm as she faced it towards. Naruto deciding that these men weren't worth the energy for her, stopped Velvet before turning towards the group. Don't waste your time on these guys. They're not worth it. He said simply as the men all flinched in fear. Besides, after today's beating, I don't think that they would try anything should they see me nearby. If they did then I would show them true power, was what he finished saying as Velvet moved away from them and to the girl. She saw as the girl smiled happily as Naruto stood in front of them protectively while the girl grabbed Ravel's hand and started dragging her off towards a nearby park. Velvet looked on with a soft smile as the girl seemed to see Ravel, even after just meeting her, as what she guessed to be a big sister. Naruto walked over and stopped next to her and watched as the girl dragged his bishop away. Looking over to Velvet he saw the smile on her face. Shrugging his shoulders, he bumped her before walking after the young girl and his bishop. Velvet walked faster so that she could walk side by side with Naruto and talk with him. Tell me Naruto-san, why did you decide to do what you did back there? She asked as she turned her attention. It was her eyes. When I saw the dead look in her eyes, I was reminded of myself at her age. Tell me a bit about that girl. He said as his hands were back within his suit's pockets. Her name is Miyuki. No known last name. She just appeared on the orphanage doorstep one night while it was raining. I was making my rounds to make sure all the little ones were asleep until I heard someone knock at the door. Opening it, I looked around to find no one there. Assuming it to be a joke I went to shut the door until I heard a noise, I looked down and there she was sitting at the door. She had a note with her, but all it said was to find someone to help raise her. She didn't know who gave her the note or how she got to the orphanage. Both of us didn't know what the note meant so I brought her in and have basically raised her as though she was my own. To replace the loss of my little brother. She explained before becoming depressed at the end. You lost your little brother? Naruto asked feeling sad for her. Oh I said that out loud, didn't I? She asked slightly embarrassed before her face became upset. But yes, I lost my little brother a few years before I found Miyuki. I still miss him. She finished bringing a hand to her chest. It's hard to get over the loss of someone dear to you. From what I've heard, it leaves a hole that could never be replaced. I myself was raised in an orphanage just like Miyuki. My parents had both died. My mother due to complications at birth while my father placed me in the orphanage a little bit after I was born. Then thanks to a close friend of mine, I found out he died due to a heart virus a little after I was born. I was picked on for my birthmark and ostracized for it by most of the adults. Though like how Miyuki has you, I had someone who was there for me. Her name was Nono Yakushi. She was a nun at my church who found me laying on my bed covered in scratches as the others had bullied me. She patched me up and then. We just started bonding. Before I knew it, I was always around her and kept to myself unless she asked me to, he told her his story. So you know how she feels. To be raised in an orphanage from day one. To not know about your family, she responded. Correct. When I saw her eyes. I was reminded of myself before I met Nono. I didn't want someone as young as her to be treated the way those men were treating her, he told her with conviction. Just meeting someone and already caring about her. You're a strange one Naruto, she said as they stopped at the park to find Miyuki on a swing next to Ravel. Miyuki saw both of them and waved them over with a smile firmly planted on her face. Naruto and Velvet walked over to them before Miyuki got off the swing and stood in front of Naruto. Naruto watched as she shyly looked up at him, with what Naruto could see as sapphire blue eyes that matched his own right eye. 
She locked eyes with him as Naruto stared on before he closed his eyes with a small smile before he felt someone hug his right leg. Looking down, he found Miyuki had latched onto his leg tightly. She looked up at with her blue eyes shining brightly as a large smile came across her face. Thank you for helping me mister, she said shocking Naruto. No prob little one, he said ruffling her hair. She grabbed his hand before dragging him towards the swings. Naruto looked at Velvet for help he saw her give him a shrug. Naruto sighed at this before he joined in, by pushing Miyuki on the swings, so that Miyuki could be happier and show off her natural smile. One that actually made Naruto's lips turn from their normal thin line into a small smile. Noticing this himself and deciding to pay her back a bit, Naruto pet the girl on the head as her injuries started to heal quickly. Miyuki looked over herself in shock as she turned to Naruto who smiled at her before pushing her over to the swing with Velvet occupying a nearby bench and watched as Naruto played with the little girl as though she was truly his own child. They spent the entire day together with Naruto acting like a father spending time with his daughter. Unfortunately, it was time for Miyuki to return home and for Naruto and Revel to be taken to their hotel. Naruto was walking behind Velvet as Miyuki was on his back asleep. The small group stopped at the orphanage before Naruto walked in after Velvet who was holding the door for him. He walked to her room after Velvet told him where it was. Placing her in her bed and tucking her in tightly, Naruto placed a small kiss on her forehead before walking out of her room with a smile on his face. Walking to the door he found Velvet standing there with a smile. You're good at acting, you know that, she said as he walked past her. Never had to look after kids. I never interacted with the younger ones when I was still in the orphanage. I guess I was just doing what was natural. Naruto admitted with a smile. You seem to have opened up more. When we first met, you didn't show any emotion. No smiles. In fact, it's almost like you never had emotions to begin with. She said as a thoughtful look appeared on his face. I guess, Miyuki-chan's happiness and how she acted towards me today broke down the walls I put around myself. The innocent smile on her face. I just couldn't help but give one to match ya no. He told her as he placed his hands in his pockets as Ravel stood up from her sitting position on the steps. Well, I have to say it really is an improvement considering when we first came here and you two met each other. Ravel said pointing at them, it was like looking at a wacky mirror. You two were just like each other. Though the smiles you both have look really nice on you. You should smile more Velvet San and you Naruto Sama, should just place Rias at the furthest part of your head and forget about her. You'll have more people to help you now that you're a king. She added as she looked away from the two. After all, I'm your first piece so I will be the closest one to you. She finished a cocky smile on her face. You're a king? Velvet asked shocked ignoring how Revel deflated at being ignored. That I am. I also serve as a queen for someone else while maintaining my own peerage. I have help of course. Naruto told her while pointing at Revel who puffed her chest out proudly. Is she your only piece? Velvet asked seeing as Naruto never referenced if he had more than one. Yes she is. And as you can see, she takes a lot of pride in that fact. Naruto said as a blush came across Ravel's face. Not that the two people behind her could see that. Now I'll answer more questions on the way to our temporary home. Would you kindly show us the way? He told her before asking her politely to lead them home. Velvet gave a nod before she walked in front of the two devils with them following closely behind her. On the way Naruto's attention was drawn to Velvet's bandaged arm. He remembered what Ajuka had told him before he left for the isles. To find the Therion, look for her demonic arm. Narrowing his eyes as his attention was still on her arm, Naruto noticed that they had arrived. It was a small wooden house. Sending Revel inside after she grabbed the key from Velvet. He opened a garganta so that Revel could grab any gear that Naruto had placed within it. Once that was done, he closed it before Revel went to explore their current housing situation. Velvet. I have something I need to ask of you. Naruto told her as he donned his expressionless mask. What is it? She asked. Do you know the identity of a being called, the Therion? The devil Ajuka Beelzebub asked me to find out about her. 
he explained as he noticed her bandaged arm's handball into a fist. I'm afraid I don't know, she lied as Naruto let out a sigh. Velvet, it's you isn't it? He asked with a nagging feeling. You already know that I'm a devil. Raised in an orphanage run by a church. Tell me about your past and I will help you. He told her as he moved closer to her. Yes. The reason I am the way I am, is because I didn't want to lose my little brother. She admitted as she undid the bandages showing her arm. A giant black and red clawed hand was what met Naruto's eyes. On the fingers sat claws that looked as though it could easily rend flesh into nothing within an instant. Naruto's left eye recorded the look and the possible deadliness of the arm as he heard her speak again. You told me about yourself. Now let me tell you how I became what I am, she said before walking off with Naruto following. Once they had stopped, he noticed her sitting on a bench, overlooking a beach as the water crashed violently against the rocks staring at her demonic left arm with anger. Sitting down next to her, Naruto placed his attention on her completely as she let out a sigh. Naruto. Even though we just met, you interest me. You seem dead to the world yet after today, you've shown that you can actually show emotions. Why do you hide them? She asked. Naruto knew she was simply buying time, but deciding to humor the girl he answered her question. I was originally a knight to a different cane. She brought me back when I was near death. After she did, I started to develop feelings for her. I thought I loved her, but in truth, I don't know how I felt about her. I don't truly know what love for another person is. At least romantically. I have felt the love of a mother but that's it. So when it came time where someone wanted to force her into marrying them, she decided that she would have to give her virginity to a pervert she reincarnated as well. I was upset at first, wondering why I wasn't in his place, but now, I just don't care. All I want is to protect those precious to me, and make sure that they can never be hurt. No matter the cost. He admitted as Murcielago appeared in his hand. It's with this blade, my sacred gear despairs onslaught Murcielago. That I will protect everything close to me. He finished with a determined smile before turning towards Velvet who was staring at her hand. The reason I am a Therion, a rare demon, is because of my family. My sister Selica Crow married an exorcist by the name of Artorius. She said noting that Naruto flinched at the title exorcist. It was a scarlet night, where a blood moon fills the sky with a bloody glow, she started. Flashback and backstory time, from here on. Past Velvet will have quotation marks. While current Velvet will have thought marks. A younger Velvet was wandering around her small hometown of Abel. She was walking around with a smile looking for her little brother. She was wearing a long-sleeved brown collared shirt that had the sleeves rolled up to her biceps. She was wearing grey jeans as well while having a pair of brown boots as well. Her gauntlet blade was still set on her right arm. I was 15 when it happened. A happy teenager, loving her life. Velvet spoke as Naruto's attention was captured. My little brother, Luffy said or Luffy as I called him, was missing and I was trying to find him. I eventually found him in a forest, he was walking to the cape, she finished. The younger Velvet was wandering in a forest until she found a young boy with dirty blonde hair wearing a small grey cloak with matching shirt and pants. He smiled at her as they both continued on a walk. But they had to stop as they were suddenly attacked by a monster. Luffy, I want you to get away now. I will protect you, she said as a blade came out of her gauntlet. The demon which stood at about the same height as the younger Velvet looked oddly like a bipedal wolf with grey fur and farmer's clothes on. Its claws glinted in the light of the sun as it growled at her. It rushed her ready to tear her head off only for her to roll under it and swipe at its legs cutting the thighs. She jumped over the wolf before stabbing it in the shoulder. She tried to remove her blade quickly only to have the wolf grab her arm and slam her into the ground and throw her away like nothing as she slammed into a tree. She sat up as her little brother moved in front of her to protect her. Luffy, what are you still doing here? Velvet screamed in shock. I am still here because I want to protect you Oni-chan, he said as the wolf charged both of them. Velvet threw herself in front of Lafayette to take the full brunt of the attack. 
the last thing Velvet felt was pain as she was slammed into full force by the wolf. She and Luffy said were sent to the ground. Pain was all Velvet felt as she blacked out. Luffy said's face was the last thing she saw. Small time skip, she woke up within her bed with a startled gasp. Looking around and finding herself in her room, she felt something sitting within her hand. Looking down she found her little brother's comb sitting in her palm's grasp. Looking outside and seeing that the town was dyed a scarlet red by the glow of the moon, she got out of bed before heading outside and moving towards the shrine at the edge of town. On her way, she had a bad feeling as she couldn't find Lafayette anywhere. All she had was a small note in her pocket written by Lafayette. The note told her that he was with their brother-in-law Artorius at the shrine. When she arrived at the shrine, she found Artorius and Lafayette standing at the edge. Artorius will be referred to as Arthur whenever Velvet is around. But if she is with others, then he will be Artorius. Lafay, Arthur. She called out to them as they both turned to her. Yet another sin I have to lay to rest. Arthur said as Velvet's hands and ankles were pinned to the ground as fire appeared on them. The fire didn't burn her but simply hold her in place. What are you doing Arthur? She asked. This place is where a seal that protected this world is. Luffy said here will be sacrificed in order to ensure we are able to protect everyone. Arthur said as Luffy said was enveloped within a golden glow. What? You're gonna sacrifice Luffy? Are you insane? Velvet screamed as she glared at Arthur. Luffy said decided to sacrifice himself once he found out what I had planned. For what it's worth. At least this way you will be protected. He told her as Luffy said floated above a dark abyss before the golden glow moved outside and formed a golden pentagram around him. Though to Velvet's shock and horror, a golden cross appeared in Lafayette's chest. She saw his face opened in pain before the cross disappeared as he started falling. She pulled her limbs away from her binds and shattered them completely. Moving quickly, she ran towards the edge of the abyss before grabbing Lafayette's hand as she almost fell in but grabbed the ledge. Arthur moved up to the edge as he drew his blade in one hand as he stared at Velvet who glared at him in anger. Yet again, you're a slave to your emotions. Goodbye Velvet, he said as he slashed her arm off. Velvet watched in shock as her arm flew in front of her face as her own blood was splattered on her face before she fell into the deep dark abyss with Luffy said just ahead of her. Flashback end, I came out of that dark abyss, with my arm being how it is. As it stands now, I'm a demon who lives by killing other demons and devouring them. She admitted as her arm was wrapped in bandages once more. Ever since then, I've worked in the orphanage and then I met Miyuki and then raised her as though she was my own. She finished as tears had formed in her eyes. Velvet. You're a strong woman to be the way you are after what you went through. You're still sane and have a good heart. Naruto told her only to have her claws dig into his right arm as the bandages disappeared again. No, I'm not a strong woman. In my rage and despair, I slaughtered everyone I could find. Entire villages, men, women and children weren't spared. I devoured them all without hesitation. I'm nothing but a monster. She told him as her claws dug deeper into his arm. And yet here you are. Protecting a young girl who had nothing in this world as though she was your own child. Velvet, even with your past, you're still a strong woman. You can't let yourself be defined by the mistakes. Learn from them, use the mistakes to become stronger. You've already started with Miyuki, now you just have to move on. He told her placing his other hand on top of her demonic one. Naruto, I was called the Lord of Calamity. I've killed hundreds without a care in the world. I'm a monster, she said pulling her arm away from his. Velvet the Lord of Calamity. It's a wonderful name. Velvet. I think we should get some sleep. This is a vacation and I really want to see what this place has to offer. He said standing up and offering Velvet a hand. Come on. Let's go. He said as Velvet looked at him. She saw a kind smile on his face as her line of sight shifted from his face the outstretched limb in front of her. Bringing her clawed hand up and placing it within Naruto's outstretched hand. She felt his hand tighten before he pulled her up. 
She looked towards him with a shocked expression as a silhouette of her little brother Lafayette appeared next to him along with a woman around her twenties. The woman had the same golden-colored eyes as her, with matching black hair. She had a kind smile as she wore a form-fitting black dress with a white apron over it. Celica, Lafay, she thought to herself as she saw them place their hands on top of her own with a smile. Live along a purpose-filled life, my dear little sister. She heard her sister say before she faded. Be happy with your life, sis. I want to see you happy and smiling like you always were. Lafay told her before he himself disappeared. Come, Velvet. Let's get you home so that you can rest. He said as he started walking with her to her home. Celica, Lafay. Thank you. And Naruto, why would you try so hard to help some random monster? She thought to herself, looking down. Unknown to her. Naruto was staring at her with a saddened gaze mixed with confusion. Why is she like this? Why am I wanting to help her? He thought to himself. It's because that's the kind of person you are. He heard the voice of his sacred gear speak within his head. The kind of person I am? Naruto asked Murcielago. Your entire life, bar your moments with the blue-haired girl and Nono Yakushi, and with the queen and rook of your former peerage. You've hidden behind a mask of indifference. Even now, you still have it. But that little girl, Miyuki, she is bringing out the true you. Seeing how Velvet is, you want to see her smiling. You want to see her happy. You will do anything to make sure those around you are happy. Mercia Lago told the boy. I want to see her happy. He questioned as he stared at Velvet. Yes. The true you, Naruto, is a selfless person who would give anything to make those around him happy. I think your time here will do good for you. You can show your true self, Murcielago told him. To see her happy, he thought to himself again before a smile came over his face. I agree, Murcielago. This place will bring out the true me. Thank you for bringing this to light, Murcielago. He thought to his partner. No problem. I will always lend my power to you. I will protect. Would you want to protect? After all, we are partners. Murcia Lago told him. Once he was done conversing with his spirit, he noticed that him and Velvet were standing outside a small house that was near the orphanage. Never want to move far from work, huh? He joked in reference to her living close to the orphanage. And here I thought you lived in the orphanage to be closer to Miyuki, he said as a small smile appeared on her face. No, I just go there and spend time with the children every now and then. And in regards to Miyuki. I plan on having her taken out of the orphanage and placed into my custody soon," she told him as she opened her door. She noticed that her hand was still showing and was still being held by Naruto's own. She looked at him as he noticed as let go of her hand before placing it within his pockets. "So you're adopting her?" Naruto asked her as he stood at her doorway. "Yep. I'm just making sure that I have everything ready for her. I just want Miyuki to live a proper life." She told him as her arm was covered in bandages once again. I can tell you'll be a wonderful mother, Velvet, he said before turning around and starting to leave. And also, Velvet, as long as I'm around, I will help you. Whether it be by helping you overcome your past or simply being there, I will help you. He spoke seriously as he turned to her and showed a bright smile. After all you've been through, you deserve happiness, he said before he walked off back to his temporary home. See you tomorrow, Velvet," he said before he disappeared completely as Velvet shut the door. Naruto, thank you," she said to herself, grateful that someone wanted to help her, even if they just met. With Naruto at his house, he had just arrived home and opened the door and walked inside to see Revel sitting in front of a fireplace within the living room, drinking a hot chocolate from a cup she found. Walking into the living room, he took his clothes off of his upper body, leaving him in a black and red singlet. He sat down on a chair that was next to Revel as his peerage set came out in a flash of energy. Placing it down on a coffee table that was in front of him, he looked at the set that was sitting in front of him. Eight pawns, one mutated bishop, two knights, a normal rook, and a mutated rook, and his only queen piece was left. Looking at all of his remaining pieces, his eyes focused onto the queen piece that was next to his mutated bishop. Revel noticed his gaze before her attention was shifted to her king himself. 
Have you found someone to take another piece? She asked expecting the obvious. Yes. And with the power I felt firsthand, I think she would make a wonderful queen. He said pulling his sleeve up to show the five holes in his arm from Velvet's claws. One thing that interests me is that she has slowed down my regeneration. He told her as the holes in his arms were closing only at a snail's pace. She was able to do that, how? Ravel asked shocked. I think it's due to the fact she can eat other demons. While we are devils, I think we can fall under that category. Or it's because we are demons, that she can't fully devour us. But she can still eat some and take power from what she did. When her claws were within my arm, I felt some of my own energy being drained. I didn't pay mind to it, but now I'm interested. He explained as a smile etched its way onto his face. Now all we have to do, is get her to join. I won't force her, if she joins it'll be by her choice. He finished standing up. Also Ravel. What do you think of living here? Naruto asked as he looked outside. Living here, she repeated. Yes, it's a big change compared to where you live now. But at least if we stay here, we can have peace. No worries about stray devils. No interaction with heaven. A place where all our problems are far from reaching us. He explained as he turned his gaze to her. It truly is a wonderful place. But are you sure you want to stay here because of the stray devils in heaven? She asked. Or is it because of Rias? She asked again. In truth, I have stopped caring about Rias. What I said was completely true. The only problem is that would she would keep bothering me until I explain why I did what I did. And I can't deal with that. He told her. Why did you? I want to know as your bishop. No secrets all right? She asked. Right. You're my precious bishop. The reason I did what I did, was because I couldn't stand to always be reminded of how I caught Rias and Issei. I was actually getting ready to tell her that I had feelings for her, then I found her trying to give herself to Issei to break the contract. After spending time with Ophisheim in the dimensional gap, I learned that I had nothing but a crush. I learned that as she gave me what she thought was her love. I accepted it and basically we've been a couple since. Kinda why she gave this marking. He said as he rubbed the marking around his neck. Right, she said it marks you as her mate. She said remembering what the infinite lowly said before she glared at Akano. Yep. He said simply. Anyway, it's time we get some sleep. Velvet is taking us out on a proper trip and show us around the town. He said as he walked towards the bedrooms. I've been meaning to ask. What is the name of this town? She asked as she stood to follow him. Abel was all he said before he went into his room. Ravel smiled as she walked into her room with a smile. Naruto-sama, I feel that you will unleash your true power in a bid to do what you must. She thought as she sat on her bed. Good luck, was all she thought before she let sleep envelop her. Time skipped to the next morning. Naruto woke up to something he hasn't experienced in ages. Peace. No sound bar the playful tweeting of the birds. No alarm clock blaring in his ears as it rudely wakes him. Sighing to himself, he pulled himself out of bed and walked down to the kitchen. He entered the kitchen and opened the cupboards before he grabbed two cups. Placing them on the bench he pulled out a bag of powdered chocolate before he started to make some hot chocolate for his bishop and himself. Once he was done, he grabbed the hot chocolate he made for Ravel and placed it aside before moving on to making blueberry pancakes. After he finished those, he heard a knock at the door. Walking over to it, he opened the door and was meet with both Velvet and Miyuki standing there. Good morning Velvet-san. And a wonderful good morning to you as well Miyuki-chan. He said to them both before ruffling the little girl's hair. Do you want to come inside? I just finished preparing breakfast for Ravel and myself. I wouldn't mind making some for you too. He asked as he stepped aside as Miyuki moved inside leaving the two teenagers standing at the door. Energetic isn't she? He asked laughing slightly as the girl disappeared into the kitchen. She truly is. Are you sure it's okay if we come in? I already made food for Miyuki and myself. Velvet said as she looked sheepish as they both stepped inside. Once Naruto shut the door and turned to Velvet, he saw her wearing a pair of black jeans with a brown vest covering her upper torso. 
Her left arm still had the bandages on them while her right had her gauntlet on it. She was also wearing a pair of black boots. Naruto had to admit that this made Velvet look like a normal teenager. And not a demon who's had a tough life. Her villager outfit. Velvet turned to him and noticed that his chest was proudly on display as he wasn't wearing a shirt. She saw the tattoo being displayed proudly on his chest along with the hole on his neck. All he had on was a pair of black jeans with slippers on. And on the very top of his head was a nightcap he wears. She looked towards the kitchen as she heard a noise. Both of them moved towards the kitchen as they saw Miyuki sitting at the table. They both sighed as Naruto ushered Velvet to the table as he grabbed some plates and dished them out some pancakes. Placing the plates next in front of both of the girls. He grabbed a plate and walked upstairs before opening Ravel's door and placing the plate on the nightstand next to her bed. Placing his hand on her shoulder and shaking her awake, he smiled as she looked towards him with a tired smile. Morning, she said with a tired yawn. Morning Ravel Chan. I made you breakfast and a drink. He said placing a tray on her lap as she sat up. Ravel looked at the tray and took a sip of the hot chocolate while letting out a happy sigh. You seriously made this? She asked as she started to eat the pancakes. Yep. Now hurry up, we have visitors downstairs. Velvet San and little Miyuki Chan are waiting for us, he said before walking out. Walking back to his visitors, he found Velvet cleaning up her and Miyuki's plates while Miyuki sat down at the table. Moving towards Velvet and the cup of hot chocolate he made for himself, he placed the cup in front of Miyuki before moving over to help Velvet out. You two seem to be right at home, he said as he dried the dishes while Velvet was cleaning them. Most of the homes here in Abel are the same in structure. Miyuki Chan spends so much time at my house that she knows it like the back of her hand, she told him as they finished. Interesting, so what's the plan for today? He asked the team standing next to him. Well, we are gonna go for a walk around the town and then head down to the cave to pick some flowers. Then we will have a picnic at a wonderful little spot I know that gives a beautiful view of the beach. She listed off the plans as Naruto smiled. I'll let Ravel know once she's done, he said as Ravel walked down. Speak of the devil, he said as he informed Ravel of their plans. Chapter End, Black Knight Town, okay I wanted to make this longer but I want to save some ideas for later. Also within this story, Velvet never went to prison. While this change occurred. Rokuro and Magilo have already escaped and are looking for info on Arthur, Artorias. A small timeline below will have the events of Berseria in this world. Also for this timeline, BN will stand for before Naruto. 9 years BN. Velvet age 7. Selica found Arthur, Artorias. 3 years after that. 6 years BN. Velvet age 10. Selica is accidentally sacrificed. Leading to the creation of Sarah's and Lafayette set or number two, Malik. Three years after that, three years BN. Velvet age 13. Lafayette set is sacrificed so that Inomanat. Three years after that, current time. Velvet meets Naruto and Ravel and is a potential queen for Naruto. In between the time Lafayette set was sacrificed and before Velvet met Naruto, Miyuki arrived at the orphanage and was later raised by Velvet like her own. And no Miyuki is not to be another Lofi set. In a way, Miyuki is the key so that Naruto will become his canon self. As was my plan all along. To have people break Naruto's Ulkiora persona and lead to him being normal. Also I plan on doing character bios for the characters within this story. Which includes their position within the story and how they interact. Naruto Uzumaki, wielder of despair's onslaught Murcielago. Main character. Naruto was raised in a church-run orphanage as his parents both died not long after he was born. He left the orphanage not long before he started to attend Kuo. Currently his reasons are unknown as he never left his mother figure's side. He became a devil after he was killed by a stray devil. He developed a crush and a slight hero worship to Rias as she brought him back when he thought his life was useless. Due to never experiencing love between two people besides that of a mother, he thought he had proper feelings for her, 
currently age 16 serving under Grafia Lucifuge as her queen. Ravel Fenix, former bishop of her elder brother Riser Fenix, was given to Naruto by her mother as a way to build strong bonds between devils. She is proud as she is Naruto's only piece and is the self-proclaimed manager of the peerage. She wants to see the true Naruto as she has seen small glimpses when he interacts with people like Akano, Kaneko, Ophis and his king. In this story is the same age as Kaneko. Bishop of Naruto's peerage. Velvet Crow. A human turned demon when she tried to save her little brother. She became Aetherion, a demon that eats others in order to become stronger. She wants to get revenge on the exorcist Artorias for sacrificing her little brother Lafiset. She raises a orphan girl by the name of Miyuki as she reminds her of Lafiset. Meeting Naruto, she is curious as to why he would randomly save Miyuki from a group of men and also as to why he wants to help her in her quest for revenge. Is age 16 and is being scouted by Naruto to possibly become his queen. Ophis. The dragon god of infinity. An immortal who found Naruto when his powers were going out of control. Helping him unleash his powers, she brought him to her home to become stronger. She has marked Naruto as her mate. Though she doesn't know what love is just like Naruto, so she lets her instincts take over whenever she is with him. This leads to some sexual problems between her and Naruto where she will try anything to make them both feel good. Current age unknown and has declared Naruto as her maid and won't let anyone push her away from being the center of his attention. Alright, I will do a bio of Grafia at a later date. But every time a new character is introduced I will place a small bio of them at the bottom of the chapter. Like these, the bio will include, background, age and connection to the main character. Also with Naruto having the butler outfit, it's for him to represent Grafia in matters where she cannot attend. Such as the meeting between the exorcists and Rias's peerage. He won't wear it often, only to important meetings. His main costume will be, his Shippuden jacket, a red shirt with a pair on black jeans and brown boots. He keeps Murcielago in a small pocket dimension that he created using his energy. Also I will explain more on Miyuki but only at a later date. Thanks for watching, that's it for today guys. Hope you all enjoyed this one if you do please leave a like share and subscribe.